All right, there, viewers. Okay, continuing in, I just had to move my file. So when I finally do edit and all that, save it, I have space. So we're continuing here in the book of Judges here. And one thing I can honestly say, the truth here, folks, I mean, this is the truth I will tell you. Learning about all these different false religions, these pseudo-Christian cults or religions, whatever you want to call them, like Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, and all that stuff, that I'm listening to uh, some teachings by Pastor Billy Crone from um, Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, I believe it's in Nevada, so um, he's teaching, you know, he goes to, you know, like Bible church different teachings on different subjects makes me really appreciate my Bible a lot more you know than um, knowing what those people are, are holding on to for their authorities like the Mormons with the, um, the so-called living prophets uh, their Book of Mormon the, um, their doctrines and covenants there's what they call the standard works the pearl great price but they also regard as God's word the, the um, the pronouncements of their living prophet. He's kind of like the Mormon Pope, if you will. Um, he doesn't make any mistakes when he speaks. Kind of like what Catholics believe about the Pope. Because Catholicism, too, is a pseudo-Christian religion, too. Um, and the Jehovah Witnesses, um, their authority really is the um, teachings of the Watchtower. Um, the, um, the Brethren at the Watchtower the, um, the headquarters, the um, Jehovah Witness headquarters there at the Watchtower Society. So that's their real authority, not not even their perverted version of the Bible that they created, the New World Translation, but it's really what you're taught by the so-called brethren, as they call it. Um, something that my cousin Anne Marie has unfortunately got mixed up in, and it's very hard to get out to Jehovah Witnesses or any other false religion for that matter. It's going to cost you everything if you try to leave. You're going to be shunned and, and pretty much regarded as dead and even hated. So, uh, but I'm, so I'm really thankful to have the Bible and to have the Bible. I could read the Bible. I don't need somebody to interpret the Bible for me. I don't need a pope or a priest or some religious system or some watchtower society or some living prophet. I got the Bible here, and I could read it, and the Holy Spirit could teach me from His Word. So, so we're going to continue here now. In Jephthah now, these people are mentioned in um, the 11th chapter of the Epistle to the Hebrews. So, um, it mentions these as heroes of the faith. So, Jephthah says, Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. And he was a son of, of an harlot. And Gilead, be, and Gilead begat Jephthah. So, let's see. It refers you to the Judges chapter 6, verse 12 here. Let's take a peek at that. Chapter 6, verse 12. I like to go, I like to compare scripture with scripture here. That's how you get the right interpretation. Oh, all right, I see you. Oh, I see. Let's see. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come, and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me, 
and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come, come, why, and why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, if ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Jephthah, yeah, Jephthah, that's how it's pronounced, there's an H-E-T-H, Jephthah, the Lord be witness between us. If we do not so according to thy words, then Jephthah, went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, because Israel took away my land, when they came up out of Egypt, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, and unto Jordan. Now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. So it was like a land dispute, it sounded like. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent, and in Israel abode in Kadesh. And they went along through the wilderness, and compassed the land of Edom, and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab. For Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land unto, into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon gathered all his people together, and pitched in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. Let's see if I can find these places on the map supplied in this Bible here. So we're talking about on the east of the River Jordan. Let's see. Okay. Jay has. I found it though. Okay, I found it. Jay has here. There it is. I found Heshbon. I found um, Jay has. Which would be in modern day Jordan. All these cities and places. Gilead would be in modern day Jordan too. And Ammon and Moab and Edom would all be in modern day uh, Jordan. So it's nice to know. I like to see the places where the locations of these cities and places the Bible describes. Because, like I said, the Bible is describing real places. Unlike the Book of Mormon, which is totally fabricated, a total work of fiction, uh, borrowed, heavily borrowed from other sources that were popular in the time of Joseph Smith. The Bible actually is talking about real places, describing real places, real people, real events. Okay. 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 Okay, here we go. Let me pick up here. 
And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coast of the Amorites, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, and from the wilderness even unto Jordan. So, so now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before this people Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Wilt, thou, will, wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns, and in Aroer in her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arnon, three hundred years? Why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be, the judge be, ju be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearken not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent, which he sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord is, and spirit is in capital S there, it's about the Holy Ghost there, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpe of Gilead, and from Mizpe of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah bowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he smote them from a rower, even till thou come to Mineth, even twenty cities. and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. So let's get that back in that map here and see if I can find this place here in this screen. Okay, Ammon, nope, it doesn't, really doesn't have much of a, um, and these maps here are just not very good at all. Not very good at all. Okay. Well, yeah, not very good now. I have to go online and get that, but I can find some good, decent maps online. Because in this Bible here, they're not very good maps. They're pretty basic, generic, I guess you could say. Okay. Okay, here we go. Even 20 cities. All right, verse 34 says, And Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months. 
that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel, it says, that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Okay, so, um, it would appear that he actually sacrificed her as a burnt offering, because that's what he said he would do. But um, if we have to really carefully read the text here, because we know that God is not, never requires anyone to perform human sacrifice. The only one who did a human sacrifice was our Lord Jesus Christ to pay for our sins. But God never required men to actually sacrifice their sons or daughters to him. Like the, that's what the heathen would do. They would actually offer their sons and daughters to, as burnt offerings and sacrifices to their false gods. But God never told the Israelites to do any such thing here. So we got to really read carefully here um, because it would appear that way in some sense here. But it, but if we carefully read this here, um, and she knew no man. So it's not like she stayed a um, virgin the rest of her life here. If we read it very carefully here. So she stayed a virgin all her uh, all her life so she never got married and had children so um, that's what appears from it then um, it doesn't specifically say that he sacrificed her but he did offer her to the Lord but he never offered her as a human sacrifice like I said that's something the heathen would do with their false gods here so we're gonna um, one more chapter here because it kind of continues on here the story here okay Je Jephthah and Ephraim and the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah wherefore pass, passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon and didst not call us to go with thee we will burn thine house upon thee with fire isn't that a little, being a little rash on the part of Ephraim and Jephthah said unto them I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon and when I called you ye delivered me not out of their hands and when I saw that ye delivered me not I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon and the Lord delivered them into my hand wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me. And Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimite, Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so, that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me pass over, that the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? And he said, Nay. Then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth. And he said, Sib Sibboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of, of the Ephraim, Ephraimites forty and two thousand. Wow, what a talking about a conflict um, uh, between brethren here. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite. And was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. It says, 
Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. And after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had thirty sons and thirty daughters, whom he sent abroad, and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then he then died Is Ibzan, and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. And Elon, Elon, the Zebulonite, died, and was buried in Ai Jalon in the country of Zebulon. And after him Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Py Pyrothonite, judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews that rode on threescore and ten ass coats, and he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon the son of Hillel the Pyrothonite died, and was buried in Pyrothon in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. Pyrothon. Let's see what that would be. Okay, that would it's in this map here. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that's something. Oh well, I have to look at the library. I go online or something. I can find it. All right, viewers. So I'm gonna upload, um, edit, and upload or save. I will upload when I get to the library. We... Not today, though, because it's gonna be raining here. So God bless, and I will see you in the next video clip here, viewers. And we look outside here. It's not a nice day at all. It's sticky and hot. It's very humid today. Very uncomfortable weather. All right. God bless, though. Bye-bye.